Right. Good. Thank you. Right. Good morning, Congress. This really is the very beginning. And those who miss the very beginning, well, it's their problem, isn't it? Um, so first of all, I want to say thank you for a very good session yesterday and a huge thanks to the S&D group and to Gianni Patella for their excellent hospitality last night. Um, we're making a slight change to the program this morning. We're going to start in a minute with Joseph and then we're going to hear from our comrade who is the Prime Minister of Sweden, Stefan Löfven. Woo! And so we'll hear from Stefan before we have the first panel. But first of all, it's my very great pleasure to introduce Joseph Tobias, who is the leader of our Hungarian sister party, to say thank you, Joseph, for everything you've done to make this Congress such a success, but also to say thank you for your very strong leadership of the Socialist Party here and to say that we are standing shoulder to shoulder for you as you fight for the principles which are the very basis of the European Union for democracy, human rights and freedoms, principles about which we should no longer be fighting in the European Union but we know that you are standing strong for these principles and we stand shoulder to shoulder with you as you take forward social democratic policies in your country. Thank you. Dear friends, comrades, it's a great honor for us that we can host today in Hungary, in the capital city of Hungary, the big family of European socialists. You all know that uh, the organizers didn't choose by chance Budapest, the venue for this conference. The choice of the venue has several messages, and if you allow me, I would like to step out of my previously or pre-thought speech and would like to remind us all to 1989, the transition, and to the fact that without the Hungarian Socialist Party, there wouldn't have been a transition in Hungary and there wouldn't have been a Euro-Atlantic integration, a NATO accession. Thanks for this to all our representatives who had been since 1990 the member of the Hungarian parliament and had been leaders of the Hungarian Socialist Party because without them we wouldn't have been able to stand here to be here. The other message is about a person, a man, who with his life, work and way of thinking shaped and transformed the world of Hungary and Europe. His name is Jula Horn. He was the politician who recognized that as opposed to stability, even uncertain change gives courage, moral approach and pragmatism and these are presumptions to change and that's why it has a message that today in Budapest with you we state that in Hungary and also in Europe, there is need for change. And the depository for this change is the Hungarian Socialist Party, which is the strongest opposition party and as such is capable to make come true the change and make come true the replacement of the present 
government because all the support that is given to all those from Brussels who believe in a democratic Hungary and all the criticism that calls the attention to the importance of Western values uh, are very important and we are thankful for that. But in the meantime, we shouldn't forget that we should replace Orban. We shall have to fight, not for us, but for Hungary. And this fight has to be realized and done in Hungary. But thank you very much for your support. It's a great help for us. We can see clearly that we are on the right track. But we can also see, and it's not a surprise for you, that the values of social democracy uh, uh, or are faced with challenges. We have to renew everything that we think in our political party family about our values, and these have to be meshed with the challenges, not only in Hungary, but also in Europe. There are many challenges to it, from Greece to many other countries we are confronted on a daily basis with new situations to which we have to find new solutions. Our situation is not made easier by the fact that following the work crisis of 2008, the populist parties and movements, which often enough use the words and thoughts of social democracy, became strong against us, often enough. We have to know at the same time that behind these parties there are disappointed, often angry persons who basically have uh, leftist thoughts and feelings, and we are responsible for them. It is our common task to give them back the belief that was worded in Hungary with the transition. We send them the message that the increasing disequalities, inequalities in Hungary are unacceptable. We shall reduce the extreme social differences which are unjust and we shall restore foreseeability in Europe and Hungary. Yesterday there was a lot of dispute about what a crisis means, what a social crisis means and how the populist parties benefit from them. The poor people, the deprived people are again in the crossfire of the right. The Hungarian left, for this reason, strives for the establishment of a just state and through that uh, the elimination of poverty. We want to establish a state in which everybody contributes to budget according to his or her possibilities. We want to establish a state in which the different groups help each other and they are not the enemies of each other. It's a great honor for us that Budapest can host the representatives of the European Socialist Party family uh, because this way we can think about together how we can make our countries more successful and better and how we can create united and democratic Europe. In Europe, we are at home with you. For this feeling, Viktor Orban has to travel to Kazakhstan. This community feeling is not known and cannot be known by Orban because uh, members of his uh, party one by one turn against, e against him. The company of Orban is not comfortable for his companions. There is no community feeling with him because they are Democrats. They know they cannot support uh, a, a politician who is for death penalty and uh, they uh, see that Europe doesn't want this way and Orban is on the other way, on an opposing way. Uh, xenophobia it can be seen in, not only in Hungary but all over Europe. From the east to the west we can see how the subject of hatred changed but the essence is uh, the intention to turn our 
people against each other. Let us make it clear that this policy is a dead-end street. Orban announces values about which we Europeans and socialists have long learned where they lead to, and we have no doubt. And we have no doubt about the fact that now in Hungary, your big, which has common roots with Fidesz, would do the same if they get in power. Our belief is the same. Everybody is equal, independent from their ethnicity, political opinion, religion, etc. So no exclusion is possible. For those who try to do it exclude themselves from Europe. I am convinced that an internal solidarity and common responsibility shall be the basis of a migration policy. In addition to this, I believe that it is possible to find techniques and solutions which do not limit the sovereignty of the member states. It, it is, there is no doubt for us that a joint and coordinated action is more successful and more humane than independent actions of the different member states in certain issues. At the same time, we also have to deal with the strengthening Euro skepticism. In spite of the fact that both in Hungary and in Europe, Euro skepticists or in minority. Our discussions with the EU are important. The past decades have convinced us about the importance of it. Today we can say that 25 years ago we needed courage to change the structure for a Western type democratic a chance offering community. Now we need more. Now we have to shape Europe. We cannot be satisfied with the structure which was offered to us in Hungary during the past 11 years and which was offered to Europe during the past 20 years. Above all, we need more understanding, more guidance, cooperation with the new member states, reduction of differences, creation of equality among the member states, much wider democratic decision making. This is how the values of Europe can be strengthened, but uh, concrete action is needed behind every value. Our party and I personally believe in a successful practice which follows the example of the European countries during the past 25 years since became since we became member of the EU we had have been learning we adapted to the conditions we went through the different stages of the EU enlargement and I can say that uh, we can clearly see the objectives, the principles. It is clear that the road to accession and the good decade that had passed since then uh, create new tasks for us. But we are prepared uh, to shape the future of Europe and not the present of Europe. For this, we also have to change, go through a change. Many will change during the next elections when a left-wing government will uh, or party will take over the governance. I can uh, reassure you that we shall get back to Europe. We shall get back to governance which respects democratic rights and get back to European policy based on democracy and equality. Thank you very much for listening to me.